Hey guys, Joe here. This is the loft bed we built for Sophie to replace her crib bed. Enjoy! I like to start most of my projects with a real rough sketch. So you can see here some of the things I was thinking. I was trying to decide how to do the slats or the supports for the interior. And so it also gives me a place to figure out measurements, what I'll need to buy. I ended up with eight foot two by sixes, two of those, two two by fours, one two by three, some oak boards, and then a whole bunch of one by fours for the cross slats. All in all, it was about $100. The first thing I worked on was the frame, which meant cutting the two by sixes into two four foot sections, and then the 81 inch sections, which I shortened a little bit after that. So I just placed them all up on the bench for the miter saw and went to work there, making sure that they were square with the frame of the saw itself. And then I supported the piece on both ends with some scrap wood. With this project, I tried to do my routing and sanding as I went along rather than waiting to the end. So I ran these all through a small roundover bit just to get the edges a little bit softer since Sophie was going to be climbing up on these and putting her hands on them or maybe putting a foot on them. I wanted to make sure there weren't too many sharp edges. So I ran all four sides of these boards through the router table. And I did that for both the links and the short sides of the boards. There's a couple of spots that it didn't really match up well because again, it's construction grade stuff. So I used the sander for that. And then I went on to sanding. And I started with 80 grit to get it roughly smooth. And then I went down to 120 grit on each board. I did not go to 220 on this project. I knew we were painting it and it turned out fine at 120. And I sanded some more and some more. I made sure that I went over the edges uh, with the router, again, because we knew that little fingers were gonna be grabbing it. So I also made sure to sand all those edges and corners real carefully. After that, it was time for the cleat on the inside of the frame. So here's where the two by three came into plane. Uh, the piece that I cut ended up being a little bit more than an inch and a quarter. And so after I made the cut that you're watching now, I ran the other piece through there also to make sure that the pieces were the same for each side. And then after I ran these through the Tabor saw, I also routed them just to soften that edge. Now, nobody would be touching this. I was just trying to reduce chip out as we were interacting with it. So I ran all these square corners through the router table again. So here I'm gluing the cleat down to the side rails. I used a two by six spacer down at the end just so I would know that I wasn't gluing the cleat too far since the end sections of the railing were gonna be inside the length of the two by sixes on the side or on the rails. I wanted to make sure I was leaving plenty of space so I used a little off cut as a spacer there. So here I'm spreading out the glue, getting ready to align it. And that small chunk of wood underneath my hand right there is the spacer block. I wanted to make sure I left myself a little bit of space below the cleat because that's where I wanted to attach the LED strip. So 
So here I'm just using some two inch interior construction nails. I made sure to do one at the far end first. And these are self tapping, so they didn't have to have a pre-drilled hole. It turned out just fine, I didn't have any problem with that. And they sunk all the way down without a countersink bit, so that was helpful. So then I came down to this end, and I used again the spacer block. And this piece of wood wasn't real straight, so I went to the middle next and kind of manipulated that piece by hand right there to make sure that it was flush with that spacer and try to straighten out the board and hold it in place with the screws while the glue was drying. And then I added in a couple more in between each section to give it plenty of strength as it was meant to hold the weight of the mattress and whoever's on top of the mattress. Now this section gave me a fit or two. I was using self-tapping lag screws, interior screws meant to not need a pre-drilled hole, but as I found out on this first corner here, pre-drilling is still best, particularly when going into the ingrain or into a section of the wood that's close to the edge. So after this one, I did pre-drill the rest of them and had no problem. Even the splitting that did take place wasn't a big deal. It was slight and these end rails are not supporting any weight. They're really just keeping the front together. So the screws that I'm using again are interior lag screw replacements and they're three and a half inches long. So I used a 90 degree corner clamp first to hold it to where I needed it to. And then I realized I needed a little bit of reinforcement. So I went out to get my five foot clamp to keep that bottom from wiggling around on me. And then I screwed in the top lag screw and then went to the bottom after that. So this time you can see that I'm obviously pre-drilling and as I said before, that went a lot better. After I did all four of these corners, I was within about an eighth of an inch of square, corner to corner, so I was pretty happy. I knew that the two walls that I'd be mounting this to weren't uh, right angle anyway, so I wasn't too concerned about that. But after I had a little bit of practice with this process, got a little bit quicker at it, got a little bit better. Also, the type of wood that I'm using had a little bit of cupping to it, so the edges, even though they were square, didn't want to meet up perfectly at the top and at the bottom where I was screwing it in. So all in all, turned out fine. Everything's secure and sound, but I think maybe using a higher quality wood would make a big impact on this project overall. came time to build the ladder I started with the long edges or the rails and I stacked them on top of the miter saw together so that I wouldn't have to measure and try to get the length exactly the same so I just cut through both of them once I matched up the part off the left of the screen there so that they were exactly the same length and then I laid those two out and I put my rungs across those pieces so I could mark it and originally I was planning on putting those on the outside, but my wife came home and saw that and thought it would be better looking to put the rails, or the rungs rather, on the inside of the rails. And I think she was right. So after I had them cut, I trimmed them down some more, and then I went to work with some pocket screws to put the rungs on the interior of those rails. And as always, she was right. So to shorten up the rungs the second time, I used the crosscut sled on the table saw because I had already sanded all of the rungs down by that time and this was already set up. So I did this instead of going back to the miter saw and it worked out just fine. You can see the stop block set up so they'd all be the same. And then here because we're doing 
pocket holes in 2x4 stock. I use the outside two holes of the pocket hole jig there. And it was pretty easy. Took very little time to drop the pocket holes in there. And then once I did that, I laid out the ladder. And I used this piece of three quarter inch plywood as my spacer. So you're looking at the bottom of the ladder there and all of the rungs are evenly spaced. And I opted not to glue in the rungs and just use the pocket holes and four two and a half inch pocket holes are more than strong enough to hold even my weight. When it came time to paint, I decided to try the sprayer outdoors. So I laid down a tarp, elevated the wood just a little bit and hit it with about two coats through the sprayer. I used a white cabinet paint and it went okay. It went fine, dealing with the wind a little bit, but it wasn't bad overall. So when it came time to put it up in Sophie's room, we took the ladder and the frame up. I laid the ladder down and then 48 inches up the ladder, we put the frame on top of it and screwed it into the ladder so we could have some support as we stood it up. Then we screwed it in using those same lag screws to four studs on the long side and two studs on the short side, but we stacked bolts over there. Then after we did that, we went around the bottom of it with the LED light strip. Then we had a chance to measure to see exactly how high we wanted the railing. So we wanted to make sure that the railing was low enough that she wouldn't roll in between the rail and the mattress and out the bottom of the rail, but it was also high enough that it wouldn't be a problem her sitting up and falling over the top of it. So we put the mattress on the bed and then we had Sophie sit on it and we held up the piece of wood and then marked it on the ladder to make sure that it was exactly what we wanted for the mattress we had. Our twin mattress we bought was about seven inches tall. Some are a little shorter, some are a little taller. So this is where the oak boards I bought come into play. I use the one by two boards for the vertical rails or the vertical supports on the edges. And then I use the one by four for the length of the rails. I use the cross cut sled on this again to get a real square, even cut. And then just like I did with the other material, I ran all of this through the router so we would have nice rounded over edges and then sanded it all to 120 before we painted. So then after we put it up, we had to paint the railing and my sweet wife was good enough to do this. I was pretty burned out on the paint. So here's Sophie's room before the bed went in and you can see her bed converted there. And then here it is after we put in the loft bed. It's 48 inches high up the wall, just big enough for a small person, but not all the way up to the ceiling. We do have eight foot ceilings, so we didn't want it to be too high. And she can climb up it pretty well and it will support my weight, the kid's weight. And so far they're having a really good time with it. I appreciate you guys watching. If you've got any advice or thoughts or comments that you'd like to share, I sure would like to hear them. I'm new to all of this. Thank you and take care.